Hello guys, top of the morning, my choke bros, my chocos. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do a little 14 vid while I'm just sat with my hobo locks chilling in the morning. Because uh, I think we can all agree right now, the spotlight, the eyes that are on 14 is stronger now than it has, ever has been. And of course it is because of the Asmund Gold stuff. Um, no him coming over, and I'm sure most of you are sick to the back teeth of hearing about him. And I've just had some really conflicting thoughts about it because it's not just Asmund Gold coming over it's other huge streamers Belialar and probably way more uh, and I think we can even see it in the 14 um, data we it recently topped its highest login I think it was 57,000 concurrent people playing up from its previous high of 52 you know and, and that's that's coming in from like new expansion releases so the fact we're in this like this middle area, Endwalkers isn't even out, and we've topped it, that is crazy, crazy, and and it really backs up what I thought was like a subjective, anecdotal experience because you know El Ging is now playing, he's clonking his way through LR. But on top of him, I've had five, six um, friends also started playing it. I've had even more. Today, I'm of, of course making this up. I don't have that many friends, but <laughs> acquaintances that I'm aware of, some of them from previous WoW days, um, some long lost friends from school who typically, I mean, I didn't even think they were into MMOs. And they're now talking about 14, asking me if it's good, if it's hype, should I play it? And I think what we're seeing also with Asmund Gold coming over is a lot more discussion on the community. And I think a testing on the WoW 14 rivalry. And it's kind of what pisses me off a little bit about it because I think there's so much focus and energy being put into what's WoW like as a game? What's 14? The rivalry between it. That community is, you know, WoWs are toxically negative and they wear their toxic negativity on their sleeve. Whereas 14 players are toxically positive and they try to act all positive and that we're a great community and then, you know, Behind the scenes on Discord, they're bitching and they're some of the most assholey people out there. So I, I get both sides. And that's the thing. I kind of feel, feel like when it comes to that side, not only is it just a gross exaggeration, um, and it really is a gross exaggeration that either community is one or the other. Um, and, and I just especially see it with what's happening with Asmund Gold lately. It's funny, he's coming and he's played it. Of course he got swarmed. And this is the thing, I, I don't know why everyone is so shocked by this like we got some article saying huge twitch streamers first experience of 14 ends in complete chaos totally ruined awful experience the 14 community have exposed themselves for being a bunch of toxic swarmers uh, and of course that's a bunch of bullshit as well i mean asman coming over was always gonna have that effect i mean he's the largest stream in the world he had 200,000 people watching his stream. Any notion that he wasn't going to get that kind of introduction to the game? Nonsense. And the thing, I think a lot of it was just, obviously, people just wanting to be on a stream. I have a tiny stream, and I have an FC of people who want to hop in front of me while I'm doing a quest and play their loot or something, and just act like a little bit of a goblin. And that's the thing. I think we all are a little bit of a goblin, and we all want to... We have goblin antics... But of course, some take it too far. And there was one particular I just saw today that, that they've actually started banning people. Square started banning people. I think there was one naked Lalafell on that freaking whale mount who was like really gunning intentionally to block Asmund from getting to any NPCs. And that's the thing. I think while a lot of those swarmers were people who were just excited to see someone come over and Asmund even kind of found it funny he kind of liked it he's like whoa shit there's many people uh but then there's some people who are doing it because they think asmund is a prick and that he should be kicked off the game that, that we don't want him over here um but i mean that the same kind of toxicity happens over on the wow side i think even a blizzard um dev team member member called asmund an arsehole <laughs> which uh I, I think asmund agrees with uh, I, I think he agrees with that, that he can be an arsehole. Uh, and we can all be, all be it. And that's why I think there's just so, too much weight being placed on this one dude playing this game. Like, it's just a guy trying out a fucking game, for Christ's sake. Uh, and while I also think it is a big deal for 14, and it's a big deal for its numbers, and its reputation, its image, of course, I think, you know, 14 gaining the traction that it is now versus Blizzards, which are just 
tanking through the floor is a perfect representation of I, I think both dev teams priorities on it the 14 team are utterly dedicated they want to make the best game possible they really are in it for the fans that is one thing i have no doubt i think none of us have any doubt on that i, I think even after the soken show and the way that soken and yoshi p you know they planned to announce that that cancer news and to have that kind of courage to lay yourself that openly to your players i i really think that's how close they've become it really does feel like the 14 team care and kind of see the players like their family um something that you know, they're dedicating to their players you get none of that vibe from blizzard i mean they i i haven't played wow in like four or five years and back then i played it for well over seven eight years like day in day out i was a wow junkie and i i remember back then getting pissed off i mean we're talking pandaria i think that's when i left pandaria cataclysm was was pretty wank um, I spent so much time, you know, trying to do PvP, the 2v2 arenas, they didn't even have, like, special mounts. 3v3 used to get mounts, and 2v2 used to get jack diddly shit. And I remember how often people used to say, we want 2v2 to get the same kind of treatment. And just year after year after year, Blizzard just did not listen. And I think we even see that with the interactions between these big streamers. Like, like here we are with, like, Zeppler for 14. And Square now given her a platform. They're like, yeah, you can come stream on 14's channel. Um, whereas Asmund and many of the other WoW streamers said that, that Blizzard didn't even acknowledge their existence. And in fact, they're acknowledging it more now that they're leaving and doing it by kind of being salty little arseholes and, boy, well, yeah, literally calling them arseholes. But to me, I, I think while all of that nonsense and ridiculousness is floating out in the ether, and, and that's really what it is, it's just a bunch of stupid bullshit that is not is not reflective of the majority of the community. It's still taking the main narrative. And just looking at the articles, like it proved it to me when, yeah, you've got one article saying Asmund's stream ended in chaos. The other one saying Asmund Gold thinks 14 is the best game he's ever played. He's now entirely 100% in the 14 camp and WoW's dead. Like, why can no one just make a fucking, like, just a middle road, a middle road commentary? Yeah, he went on there, there were some swarmers, but the dude enjoyed it. The dude's just playing a freaking game. Let's see how he does. And uh, that inability to be nuanced, I just see it in everything. I, especially, have you guys noticed, this is the thing that's really bugging my brain. You ever go on like YouTube vids, or even just Facebook posts or something, like they'll be posting something, I don't know, about pandas, or someone who did something amazing for charity. And I'll always see the top comment as someone who's basically trying to be a toxically positive moral high grounder and what, what i mean by that is i so often see the top comment being how can anyone laugh at these pandas these this this panda charity is trying so hard at the fact that people don't care what's the world coming to or some kid with a disability overcoming adversity and the top comment being i can't believe people would laugh and mock at this person what's wrong with the world we're all a bunch of pricks uh, and i i saw it and i was like Wow, people are laughing at this kid. So I, I go trawling through the comments and I just don't see it. I just don't see people saying half of this shit that people always kind of make the narrative that they are. Now, yeah, I'm not saying that there wasn't somebody in that chat who was making fun of this kid in this example, but it must have been just a few. And what I'm saying is just a few people being toxic, arseholes, just being goblins. They're just sad lonely pathetic individuals who would just try to garner attention and drama and trigger people in any way they possibly can yeah they definitely exist but i think the counter narrative is almost just as bad i, I kind of see it as just the same kind of extreme i love the old hermetic saying that all extremes are equal and identical in nature they're just different in degree and I think that's what I've definitely been seeing with 14, especially Asmund coming over, is people just going way too hard to counterbalance a few people's negative narrative. That, that, yeah, why did that top comment on that panda video have to be somebody berating other people for not, for not giving a shit about the pandas? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like some people think that they're positive, but they can only express their love for something by... 
attacking the people who hate it. And I don't think those people realize that they are just as equally a part of keeping that this tension, this giving attention to these few negative twats. And I saw a really great example with one person who has been gunning for Asmund. Um, they've been doing it for years. They said quite a few years ago, a bunch of deplorable stuff. And now when Asmund came over to 14, this particular person made the whole post of we all need to get Asmund off the game. We need to block him, block him from NPCs, do everything we can to kick him off the game. And that person's tweet, I think it was, it only got something like 40, 50 likes. It really wasn't that much. And then... But what I saw in response to that was so many people being like, oh, this is what's wrong with the 14 community. This is why I wouldn't play and why I'm going to stick with WoW. And they, you know, and the person who makes that post, that post gets like 20 times more traction than the person who said the shitty thing. And, and what I'm saying is it's just creating a narrative out of thin air. It's allowing the vocal minority, the minority of total douche canoes, to really override the narrative of the, of the entire thing. And uh, whereas the way I'm seeing it, there is no war. The war is over. It doesn't need to be a battle anymore. We've got loads of WoW players who are now coming over to 14 and realizing, wow, this is really freaking cool. We've got Yoshi P talking about how much WoW inspired them and that we wouldn't have 14 as we know it if the team hadn't taken inspirations from WoW. You know, then the WoW team sending stuff over to Yoshi to say congratulations. It, it, it's like, where is the war still raging from? Why, why does it still freaking exist? And that's the thing. I think the people still trying to keep that war in place, they're having to go to the most desperate lengths to do it. You know, what, what really got me with, with Asmongold's community, especially when I thought he wouldn't enjoy 14, other than it being a weeb game, a freaking weeb game. It's got cat girls and bunny girls and only a bunch of prepubescent betas could ever possibly enjoy something like that, which to me is always hilarious. It just shows your insecurity. Like, why do you feel so insecure about a bunny girl? Like, bunny girls are freaking great. I love seeing a bunny girl. Why the fuck not? Like, are you really that sensitive and touchy to, to what really amounts to just an aesthetic design choice in the game. It's, it's not like 14, no, then mimics like a really chibi, chirpy, anime-ish. Oh, let's go collect all the waifus. And I'm just playing this game to ogle cat titties and, and get married. And uh, and it's not like that. The game's not like that. And anyone who sticks with it is going to know, no, 14 actually brings the feel. It's actually pretty deep. It's pretty dark. It, it does. It goes into philosophy and it's very thought provoking. And I, I think that's what is going to be the hardest transition from WoW players to 14, you know, we're going from a predominantly gameplay and mechanical and mount collecting and extreme raids and a very gameplay based experience to a story based experience. And that transition, I, I really didn't think Asmund Gold would make it because he typically skips story. He typically doesn't like it. But honestly, after watching his stream, you know, and he's just sort of skipping through the dialogue. He's not reading everything line by line, but he's perusing through. He's getting a sense of it. And and funnily enough, interacting with it really well. Way, way, way more than I was expecting. Um, and, and it seems like there's actually hope for him enjoying this game. If people can just chill the fuck out. I mean, the whole swarming thing can be dealt because I think you can go incognito in the game. So, I mean, he just needs to do that. But what really I found amusing, especially with Asmund and his community, or should I say maybe more his community, you know, being so standoffish about 14 and trying to put it down based on those like, cliche tropes of it being a weeby game and then the second Asmund comes in he's posting himself with bunny girls he's checking out cat titties he was literally checking out the, the boob meter how high it would go goes into the game I think he started in Gridania so I, I think he meets your Stola first and he's joking about your Stola being his wife and well can we get married and he loves her. And the thing, he's all doing it satire and tongue in cheek but that's how it starts and that that is still how it even is for me now it's just fun it's like i don't actually have a fetish of a girl with a freaking tail and cat ears i mean maybe i do i don't know i don't know I, i'll have to be in the situation to really know but maybe i have developed that taste because of 14 <laughs> but what i'm saying is like i even i go at a lot of it with like tongue-in-cheek kind of joke and satire or oh, what i wouldn't do to get some of those viera feet and just pop them digits into my mouth like it does it starts as a bit of like a humorous satire and you just you just carry that and what you find is just like i'm sure most of us who started with anime i mean when i first played 10-2 i nearly puked 
I nearly freaking puked. Why RP in position? Not for me. This is weird and cheesy and girly as fuck. And we will start that with anime, but but once you just get past that like really stupid impression, I didn't even play FF9. FF9 for about five years longer than I wanted to because I thought it looked so chibi and weird. So I, I totally get people who still have that, who have that standoffish nature that it's a weeb game sort of mentality, but it just takes playing it and you'll quickly realise that un unless the game or the medium or the anime or whatever is over leaning into that that trope and it has like no other redeeming qualities it doesn't have a a good story a good gameplay or good mechanics it, it just seems so silly to pin so much on that quick snap judgment and one that most people have to make especially wow players i mean even 14 players as well because i get it an mmo is really intense it's something you play every day it's something that becomes a part of you and, and by extension a part of your identity and for that to be challenged for people to criticize that it is. It's like you're taking a strike to yourself. Uh, and I even felt this with some Final Fantasy games I fucking hated. Shit talk plus Final Fantasy and something in me doesn't like it. I immediately feel affronted because, because yeah, Final Fantasy, I love it so much. It's part of my identity and I really care about, about this franchise. But when it's now got to a point when people are losing their goddamn minds over one streamer, just one dude playing a game. Um, and, and it's not just the people who are like attacking Asmund. I'm also seeing it on the other side. I'm seeing so many people who are losing their goddamn mind about the swarming and people being like, oh, 14 players, what are we doing? This is our time to prove ourselves. We should be better. We're better than this. We're just, we're proving that we're just like the WoW players. And, and yeah, we need to show Asmund gold. We need to fall beneath his feet and prove to him that we're the best. And it's like, chill the fuck out, man. While it's certainly not a non-story that one of the largest streamers in the world have come over to 14, uh, it's also not such a big deal that people need to go overboard with virtue signaling and, and trying to pander to the entire community and experience. I, I think it's both just as obnoxious and I think the more we talk about it, the more we focus on these like toxic extremities, which really are just the ends, like they are, they're, they're just the extreme ends of the narrative. I think the fact that we just keep focusing on that and talking about that, it's just keeping what is really a non-existent issue still in existence. I mean, even, even me doing this video talking about right now, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, there's not a massive R still that has to be given as much weight and gravity as, as I'm seeing it being given. We've got two games that, how about they're both great? How about that? We just have WoW and we have 14 and they're clearly both great games because they clearly both have huge communities of players uh, who stick around for years and years and years and keep paying that subscription and keep enjoying the game. And both camps have loyal fanatics, people who would die by the sword for that game. So how about they're just both freaking good, but they're both good in what is very, very different ways. And, and that's the main thing. I think kind of each... Um, community represents a different value because at the end of the day, what well, I'm going to say these are extremes and I think that communities by and large are the same. I can't imagine there's that much of a difference in how many players are just your average players coming in to enjoy the game, enjoying it. They're decent people. <clears throat> you know, they, they get on, they never cause a problem. And on the flip side, there will roughly, I mean, it can't be that much different, but a kind of similar ratio of arse hats on both sides. Both sides won't have that big an, an ass hattery difference. And then at the same time, so while I think that, at the same time I do think, do communities have a different general feel to them? A general collective persona or value code? Whatever it is I'm trying to express. Um, yeah, I do think different games. Now, while I think that we, we kind of over-exaggerate how different the communities are. That community is bad for that, and that community is bad for that, and we're the better ones. And there's this sort of battle for which is the more righteous community. I, I think they're probably all equal, but at the same time, I do think different games do uh, bring out different qualities, different values in the player. I mean, I mean, WoW is a game where you're literally dropped in it, and you're <laughs> from the very start, you are destined to hate the alliance. Fuck the alliance for the horde. If I see any of those newbie alliance boys trying to do their quests and they've got their PvP hound, I'm going to shut them down. Not once, not twice, thrice. I'm going to troll them. I'm going to raid their village. I'm going to pillage and burn everything. Everything they hold dear. I'm going to take it all. So it does, it does foster that. And, and then on the flip side, you might have 14, which 
again, it kind of does have these unspoken rules. There's way more unspoken rules in 14, sort of like codes of ethics and decency that a lot of players abide by because it's a game that I get the sense is more community driven and feels driven. I think that's reflective of the story and the kind of feeling that 14 uh, is trying to elicit in its players. And I think while that does lean towards more toxic positivity, aka I've even seen people get really pissed off and angry uh, that your stoler's the better character. How dare you suggest that Alpha No and Alize are better? How dare you? Right. <laughs> Again, that thing of people trying to express the things that they love purely in opposition to what someone else loves. I think we fall into that trap more. Um, you know, but then again, even another thing on top of just the Horde and Alliance dynamic, WoW is a game that, yeah, DPS meters are a big thing. Right? Do you have good numbers? They introduced item level, which was a big freaking number. I don't know if it's still in there now. It was just coming around um, in the last expansion I played, or the last two. Where you would really have your item level like shown, and even certain dungeons of rage you could not get in without a certain item level, and that was set very strongly by Blizzard. But but then the community took it even further, where you would literally get kicked if your DPS wasn't at a certain meter, if your item level wasn't at a certain thing, and these sort of metrics and numbers that I've seen, of course, the fourteen team really not put a focus into. In fact, they they've actively discouraged it. So so yeah, there are there are different communities. Different games do inspire different traits. You know, they do expose both the better sides and the worse sides of different people. And I think that's the main thing, like when people say whether they prefer 14's community or WoW's, I think it just depends what, what your personal value system is. I think it's even similar to like left or right wing politics. You know, right wings will typically like the more honest, realistic, upfront, I'm going to say it as it is. I ain't going to put a filter on it. You know, I don't mind having an active, hot debate with you. Why not? We're not babies. We're not children. Let's go at it. Let's battle. Let's do war. Some people really like that. I, I've got loads of friends who, who they absolutely love banter. The darkest banter. No insult is too insulting. Uh, and they love that. They resonate with that. And what absolutely sickens them is more kind of the lefty. I don't know. I'm comparing left and right wing to wow and 14 this is not a good not a good analogy um but i don't know like like 14 i guess it's trying to create more like an altruistic friendly community kind of environment but then it has these like kind of sickening virtue signaling sort of hypocritic bit underhanded bit two-faced and and disingenuous you know saying one thing to to look morally virtuous and then being a backstabbing little bitch on the other side. Like some people find that more sickening than the other and they would kind of rather align with that vibe. Like, like toxic people exist and they're going to align with what community reflects the toxicity that they like to put out. And I think that's all that's left of the rivalry. That is all that is remaining. These are just social optics. These are just the optics from the community that is massively exaggerated, is massively exaggerated by the media. Again, when, when you can have some news story saying that Asmund playing was the best thing in the world and he loves it, and then on the flip side saying it was an absolute disaster, it's, it's basically a narrative buffet. The internet will provide every narrative under the sun, and you can go and pick the one that you like. But goddamn though, Asmund made 30 grand on his first 14 stream. <laughs> ah, oh man, it, I mean, it was 10 hours. 30k. Shit the bed, man. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you have any commentary on this entire WoW 14 dynamic? And yeah, while I think that I have a sense of what each community is like, um, even that, even that is just like a subjective little echo chamber. Because I spend most of my time with my guild, my free company. Like, how do you actually know what a community is like? Is it just the things that you are subjectively exposed to? Like the particular posts you've seen or the particular experiences you've had? I even saw some dude write an entire article about how 14 players are becoming um, unkind towards the Sprouts the new players, and that it needs to be fixed. It's a dramatic issue that needs fixing. And I read the freaking article, and they even admit, generally 14 has one of the kindest communities towards new players. That everything that the devs have done, have done it so that you know, Sprouts don't just get shat on, they don't get thrown into really hostile, you know, 
DPS and healing meter, checking environments that WoW can throw its new players into and that it could be really toxic. And yeah, this person I'm talking about who wrote the article, they said that generally they thought 14 was good like that and then they come across one dragoon in a dungeon so they did a dungeon run there were two sprouts a dragoon and them and apparently the dragoon was roasting on the sprouts the entire dungeon they were intentionally pulling stuff intentionally trying to get them killed verbally abusing them the whole time and now this person has this feeling that they need to write an article from that one experience telling 14 players that it's becoming an issue how we're treating sprouts you see what i'm saying one small, isolated, echo chamber subjective experience is enough for that person to flip from a positive to a negative narrative. It's crazy. Be a bit more nuanced. Your particular value system and your experience of the game is not reflective of shit. So can we all stop pretending it is? Anyway, I am done. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my early morning rambles. And yeah, that tick, that 100k tick, that verification is coming. I'm about 600 subs away. So if you want some more rambly content like this, that's less editing and just more on the fly with the topics that come up, hit that subscribe, hit that like, let me know, and I'll see you on the next video. Kupo! <laughs> Fuck me, it's raining. Oh, holy hell. Is it really July? <laughs> Jeez. Look at it. Look at it. Good old English weather. Can you even see the rain? Probably not.